Okay guys, this is gonna be a video on how to level your um, the bed or the, yeah, the, the plate, the build plate on your um, resin printer. This is my, this is a Sonic Mighty 4K. I just this just did a video showing how I install, installed this um, you know, homebrew screen protector on it. Leveling your bed, whether you have a, you know, an aftermarket or homemade screen protector or no screen protector is gonna be the same process. So it's fine. It's fine that, that, is, that, that this is here. This could be here or not be here. It's not gonna affect leveling the bed at all, all right? So on something like the Frozen, and same thing with Elegoo Mars, or um, I'm assuming any Cubic as well, uh, I've turned my printer on. You're gonna wanna loosen the screws in the bed and get the, on the, on the, on the build plate and get the build plate nice and loose. So we're gonna adjust the camera. Uh, I'm gonna do that first. So I'm gonna loosen the screws. This, for the Sonic uh, Mighty 4K, it has two screws on each side. Sometimes there's one screw, sometimes there's two screws going this way. Just depends what model you have. Uh, of course, the Sonic came with an Allen key, which I can't find now. Oh, here it is. Came with this Allen key for loosening the screws. It's a little short, it's a little weird. It's got the little weird ball thing on the end. I don't like Allen keys like this because I feel like they strip parts out more than they help anything. So I went online. I'll put this, I'll put a link to this in the, in the description of the video. And I got one of these. It's a, it's a three millimeter um, Allen key, like kind of wrench thing. It's got a thing here for this way, but I use it this way. And all we're gonna do is um, we're gonna loosen all four of the screws. That's the first thing, actually, like I'll show you. When you go to tools and you go to Z calibrate, it says take off the resin vat, which we did already. I removed the vat. You don't want to do this with a vat. Take the vat off, obviously. And then unscrew the screws on the build plate all the way. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay. Unscrew these screws. Yeah. This, a tool like this makes it a lot better because you can stick it all the way in nice and flat and you can twist and use the mechanical advantage to get, to really torque your um, Allen screws down without, you know, stripping them out or ruining your brand new or old um, 3D printer build plate. Look at that, see if the last screw came out, you want the build plate nice and loose. So it's moving this way, it's moving up and down, it's gonna like so, because as it comes down, you're gonna lower this down to, to the plate now, and you're gonna have paper in between it, but you want this to give give because you want it to come up flush. You don't want it to be like, if you want one screw or two screws like this, it's gonna come down and it's gonna crash right through your plate or right through your, your screen. You don't, want to, you don't want to do that. So we've loosened the screws, this is step one. We removed the bat, which is step two, or one, depending on thing. Step three is we're gonna put a piece of paper. It's just regular printer paper, works the best. It's all it's doing, the reason we're putting paper here when we level it, because it's gonna simulate um, the thickness of the FEP. When the VAP is down, this printer paper is about the same thickness as the, as the FEP, according to the manufacturer of most uh, resin printers. They could be lying, but let's pretend they're not. And then we just put it here. And now we're gonna lower the bed. Uh, people have complained online that this takes forever. And you know what? It does, it's super slow, but you know, I prefer that. Slow and me going to get like a drink of water or you know, doing some sit-ups off camera or whatever while this takes you know a minute or two to lower is much better than if it races down and crashes through my screen. Uh, I would recommend, especially when your printer is new, but all the time, when you're doing stuff like this, like an automatic thing where it's lowering the, where it's lowering the build plate or something, I would stand near your expensive fancy printer and watch it do it just in case there was some user error and you see like it starts to go and you hear like a crack or something like that, you know, and you could turn it off at the last second or loosen the screw or something. I don't, I'm a little paranoid. I like to, I like to be, I like to be near my thing. So I'm ready to, ready to go if, if there's any problems, but you know, once you get more comfortable with your machine, you can obviously do what you want to do with it, how you want to do it. Let's adjust this a little bit. All right. So it's lowered down. It's now at the zero point for your um, for your your, your your Z axis build plate. So now it's telling us to tighten the four screws and make sure paper is unmovable. So basically, what they're saying is you want to push this build plate down, tighten these four screws, and make sure that this paper will not see. If I push here, the paper will not come out. We want to simulate that with the screws. So I've tried this with these type of things pre uh, before, especially with a big build plate like this. Um, what I like to do a lot of times is like I'll put fingers here and other people have done like, you know, the rock and roll one or the Jimmy Superfly Snooka, um, pro wrestling, uh, uh, WWF fans from the eighties remember is he'd do this and then jump off the top turnbuckle. Uh, but I have a problem with the big build plate because even if you do even pressure, I always have one side that doesn't come out that great. So what I found works well, um, too, is I wiggle it a little bit, get it centered. I feel like if there's give this way and this way, I just want it between where the give is. Uh, I want to push the plate down, but I really, this is going to sound wonky, but I like to push on the side. Um, I push this way, but I put two fingers on the side that I'm tightening and one finger on that side and it's close to the middle of the X axis on the plate. And I'll show you why. Tighten this down right here. And I'm not, the first round I'm just tightening, like just tighten up where it won't turn all the way, you know, freely. 
and I'm gonna do the same thing, two fingers on this side. Ah, if I can get two fingers in there. And I'm gonna push on the center of this plate and do the same thing. That's, that's why this tool comes in very handy. See, oh, it's a little bit too tight almost. Let's see, push this down, make sure we're nice and flush. Doing it with my right hand, it's harder because I'm left-handed. All right, yep, okay, and then we're gonna go back. I guess I'll do one finger, but I'll push very hard. Yeah, two, but I wanna push as close to the middle as I can. Tighten that. Tighten that, okay, come to this side. Now, since that side's very tight, I'm gonna push this side down pretty hard, full force. Of my this hand pushing down pretty hard and then just tighten these a little bit tighter <sighs> same thing come over here Oof. tighten them a little tighter not so much that you're stripping the screws out at this point but yeah okay so that's nice and tight now we're in moment of truth <gasps> oh yeah oh yeah that is oh that is a not that is a i don't want to pat myself on the back because i might break my spine because i'm so you know strong obviously as you can tell from these videos but that is it that is a level that is some sweet goodness right there. That is that is nice and tight, as they say. Um, so then when we're done, we press done. Now the build plate goes all the way up. So um, while we're waiting for it to go up, next step we're gonna do is we're gonna put the vat back on and then we're gonna screw the vat back down and then it's gonna be basically good to go to print. The one last extra step that I like to do, and that you should too, I, when, I, when, my, when my printer's printing, I usually have it here. Uh, and you want to take your, when your vats in, before you start pouring stuff into it, you want to make sure your printer's level. Basically, you're just going to put a level here across the top of the vat. Like, um, I'll, I'll do it when it's on. Here, let's wait for this to go up. All right, 100 years later, <laughs> it, does, it does take a while. So the next step is you're going to gently put your vat back on. And if it's, you know, the Sonic goes on this way with the uh, Elego, the Mars series, they usually load in through this way. You have the, the, the little tightener stay on. These fasteners don't stay on, so you want to be careful when you're putting them on, not to drop them in the vat, you know, scratch the vat or break something. But you want to tighten them down just to spin them on this way. And then what I like to do is tighten them when they get to the, to, you know, you have to put a little pressure. I like to tighten them both at the same time so they have equal pressure going down, pulling down onto the build plate evenly. Now this should be done. Uh, I don't move my printer back and forth that much naturally when I'm just building stuff. When I'm just making prints, I just keep it. Once I get it set, I keep it set. But what you want to do when you get it, when you get it set, like where it's going to be, like here, you want to get nice and steady. You want to let. You want to make sure that your printer is level. You want to make sure you want to go here and check this. See, that's a little bit off. I can raise it up a little bit. Same thing. Go here. That's pretty level that way. So what I like to use is this blue um, poster tack. I use this the same thing I put this on prescription bottles to, you know, pieces to stick on my miniatures when I'm painting them. What I like to do when I need to balance something is I will take off, I'll get a good size chunk. This stuff's really cheap. You can get like like five strips or a square of it for like two bucks at Walmart or, you know, at any dollar store that you can get it at. But I'll get a piece about this big. If I, um, if I have a really uneven printer space or, uh, you know, my printer's really uneven, the Elegant Mars Pro 2 that I have, uh, the wheels on the front and back, you can unscrew them until I kind of level them. And this table the same way. I've leveled, leveled this, this metal table that this is on. But if this one doesn't have those, what I would do is I would just get a small piece of this and I would put it down under the support and then mush it in. And I would do it for whichever side or whichever one was working. If all four needed it, i put it on all four. And that way it just kind of sits there. And as long as you don't move your printer around a bunch, once you get it level, you're, you're good to go. So for now, this is fine. It's actually pretty level. I might fuss with a little bit, um, but I wouldn't worry too much. But yeah, just a, a little circle or you know, piece of this under each, each one of the legs, super easy, cheap way. And this stuff, it won't wreck your printer. It, it, it sticks on, but it won't stick to your table. It won't stick your printer. You can peel it off without ruining anything in case you want to keep your printer pristine. If you're going to sell it or you just don't like things gummed up. This stuff is, this stuff is really great, really useful just to have around for general purpose stuff. So now the next step would be to fill in your resin, print out your, you know, do your first, um, your first, um, your, <laughs> your first file, slice your first file, and then you, you would fire this up and run it. So that's what we're going to do in one of our next videos. So please sit, like, and subscribe so you can watch me do more stuff and hopefully um, not mess it up too bad. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it.